And uh, the first thing I want to talk about is just managing user access within the system. And I've got a live customer example. This was a, a vocational school that came to us about six months ago, and they were outlining kind of their week-to-week -week processes for how they promote their courses, how people register for their courses, and then how they do this whole process of then tracking grades, you know, course promotions, all the things we kind of talked about in our agenda. So first of all, they, they promote all their courses that are available for uh, registration up on just a, a web server. So people will go in, they'll find a course, they'll register by filling out a form, and it populates into some sort of database that then allows them to export those users into a spreadsheet. They then take that spreadsheet, they format it, they work with it outside this other database, get everything formatted the way they want, and then they upload everything to salesforce.com. At the same time, this is a company that was already using Moodle, so then they go and they take that same spreadsheet, they format it a different way because every database kind of accepts data a little bit differently, and then they upload all those users to Moodle. And then once people complete their courses in Moodle, they then export grades and activities and things like that and then go dump it back into Salesforce. So this is a, a very manual process, and our good friend, the Excel spreadsheets, and, you know, intimately involved through every step of the, the way. And what they shared with us is they were managing about 200 students in a monthly period, and that was equating to about 30 man hours of work on a weekly basis for somebody to keep all three of these disparate systems in sync so that, you know, the people that were registering online were, uh, you know, effectively tracked in Salesforce and effectively enrolled in the appropriate co corresponding course over on Moodle. So what we do with our integration is we kind of take that whole spreadsheet process out of the loop, and we, we do two things with our solution. One, we can use Salesforce as a way of automatically authenticating users into the training system based on certain parameters, you know, usually by them being defined as a partner or a customer or whatever parameter you're using to define your your potential customer base. You know, in, in Salesforce, they've got default kind of um, definitions like, you know, this is a prospect, this is a partner, this is a customer, you know, this is a high-value customer, whatever, whatever triggers you're using to identify different types of customer groups in the system we can use a lot of those same triggers as a way of authenticating people into the system. Um, on top of that, once people are authenticated and mapped appropriately to the, you know, the right account record or contact records, um, we can then synchronize student result data back into the system. So in our world, the system works in two ways. We can use it as a way to automatically grant access to people based on, and really the, the main trigger that we use there is the domain of their email address. So we use that as a way of mapping to an appropriate account record inside of Salesforce.com. And then user tracking as far as their grades and uh, when they completed a course or, you know, how many times it took them to complete a, uh, or get a passing grade on a quiz, all these different data points are then pushed back over to Salesforce so that you have one central depository for all of your student data. Now, it's pretty easy to to set up a system where you kind of grant access to the system. But really one of the bigger values that we see in the solution is the way that we can restrict access. You know, a lot of times a company has different types of user groups. And just a moment ago I was, I was rattling off different types of external user groups that you might have. Well, you also might have internal user groups. You know, we've got customers that want to use the same learning platform as a way to train their employees. They want to use that same platform as a way to train partners, and then they also want to use that same platform as a way to, to train customers. So within those, those three general categories, you might have a, a lot of different types of subcategories. Like, for example, inside of customers, maybe you've got, um, well, I can use one of our customers, a company called Gomez. They actually have three levels of customer training. They've got what they call open university, so just by being a customer of theirs, you get access to kind of this free basic training. Uh, they also have what they call professional institute, and that's a, a subscription type of training that a company would purchase that would give access to all their employees to that, that kind of level of training. And then they've got certification training, which an individual would purchase, 
um, because they want to get certified on their product and be able to reflect that on their resume and, you know, show that they are Gomez certified, so to speak. And then they've got partners. And in their world, they've got two types of partners. They've got referral partners and reseller partners. And each of those partners receives a different type of training. So as you can see, there's a lot of different types of kind of groups that you might want to deliver training to. And we actually use our Salesforce plugin for, for Moodle as a way of restricting access um, or, or kind of uh, only revealing training that a certain user group might be qualified for based on certain triggers that we place over in Salesforce.com. So what you're seeing here in this next slide is on the left, we've got just a little snapshot of an account record. And what we've created here is a custom field called account learning path. By, by selecting uh, an account learning path, it does a couple of things. One, it, it says, okay, this account is assigned to this particular training path, um, which would then equate to whoever logs in only seeing certain types of uh, courseware based on that trigger. But more importantly, what it does is it actually ripples down through every contact associated to that account. So, you know, I think you could imagine the amount of time that might be involved if you had a customer that had several thousand users and they came in and they purchased a, uh, a in your world, a training path, and they, you needed to go in and set up a, a, a flag inside of all these different contact records to be able to grant them access. Well, we built logic into our plugin so when you set that trigger inside the account record, it actually ripples down through every contact associated to the account at that time. It also automatically authenticates new users that register on the system to be enrolled in those same courses as well. So what our system actually does is when uh, a user goes and fills out the registration form on, on the Moodle platform, it will look at their email address and then go look in Salesforce and say, okay, does this person already exist over in Salesforce.com as a contact record? If it does, or if they do, then we update that record. We don't overwrite anything that's already existing in the record. We just simply add things. So if we, you know, capture their phone number or an address or um, whatever relevant information you might be wanting to track via that registration form, we update those records accordingly so that you've got additional information. It also then looks in the account record and says, okay, is this account record um, flagged to be a part of a, a particular category of training? If so, it will then automatically flag that record for that contact and then automatically enroll them in whatever training they're supposed to be able to see. Then when they get um, the confirmation email and they log in, they just only see the training that is available to them based on either what their company has purchased or if they're available for free training, they can see that, or whatever the case may be, they're only going to see what they've been assigned. Additionally, with the, uh, at the contact level, you can see over here to the left, we've got you know, the, the account learning path, which has been assigned to our contact record, and now we've got a related list within the contact record that actually shows all of the enrolled courses that make up that particular learning path. So kind of in this world, you can think of a, a learning path as being like a curriculum of training, whereas what we show over here is each individual enrolled course that might make up that entire curriculum. And if you look across horizontally here, you'll see we've got fields for course score, course complete, course complete date. Um, there's about five or six different key data points that we can track. We don't have them all turned on in this particular view. These are just some simple ones that that seem to make the most sense. But we can see right within somebody's contact record whether or not they've completed a particular course, the date they completed it, what the score they received for that particular course. And um, you're going to see later when we talk about reporting that you can actually click on this uh, enrolled course ID and it will take you to kind of a, a sub-menu about that enrolled course that will show you all the different activities. So a particular course might actually have several kind of steps as a part of that course. There might be several documents that have to be read, maybe some videos to watch, maybe there's a test to take. So all those different course activities then get tracked as part of an activity um, that's then mapped to that particular course. 
which really just helps with the roll-up reporting. So if you wanted to, you know, say, show me all students across all companies that completed this course and have, you know, got an 80% on this particular quiz, it allows you to roll all that data up nice and uh, neatly.